50% of normal as the shortages are going are not going away anytime soon surprisingly other passenger vehicle players like tata motors at 25000 vehicles and mahindra at 13000 vehicles have reported much more resilient sales but have also indicated supply side challenges in the upcoming months to paraphrase the demand is quite robust and most new models that are getting launched are having 6 to 9 months of waiting period so other than a few buyers who are refraining to purchase cars due to higher fuel costs currently most of the people are looking forward to buying new cars so as soon as the supply side improves which we believe should happen after 2 to 3 quarters and at max 5 to 6 quarters by the end of fi23 we might see good sales due to plenty of pent up demand finally tractors and commercial vehicles so the tractor sales have softened out a bit after the highest ever sales last financial year where mahindra has reported a 7% drop and escorts has reported a 25% drop year over year this month however the outlook seems bright given the record monsoon activity this year it's important to note that the monsoon was a bit late this year which has pushed the harvesting activity by a month or so and additionally what we have known from our ground checks is that the rubby sowing is going as strong as ever and thus we are optimistic that the sales could pick up in the upcoming months coming to the most optimistic segment commercial vehicles what we have seen is that the cv industry has gone through a severe slowdown in the last 3 years we have seen decline up to 70 to 80% other than the covid decline and as per the latest numbers we have observed some signs pointing towards a pickup so post the second covid wave markets are witnessing a gradual demand recovery across most segments led by medium and heavy duty commercial vehicles uh, due to improving fleet utilization levels a higher number of road construction projects being awarded and executed at the same time and improving cement consumption so this is also visible in the numbers this month where the leader tata motors has posted a robust 33000 vehicles which is much higher than what they have reported in fi19 even in fi19 and same is evident in the numbers of volvo iker commercial vehicles and ashok leyland numbers so overall we are very optimistic on commercial vehicles and tractors that is all from me and i will now request ak to take over oh uh, thank you nish uh, as over to you on the gas prices update uh yes uh, so the future belongs to gas right um, until and unless we don't get evs which is uh, 10 15 years down the line Uh, the future belongs to gas. Uh, the transition will be from the uh, combustion uh, IC engines uh, to the uh, gas or the hybrid engines, and then we go to the uh, EVs that are there. So, what has really happened over the last one year? Uh, the gas prices have gone up 500 percent across the world. Gas is in demand uh, as uh, coal-based uh, products continue uh, continue to. Uh, get less and less favor because of the pollution that they create people are moving towards gas uh, so the gas demand has shot up point number 1 because gas demand has shot up everywhere in the world be it eu be it uh, united states people are suffering gas shortages that are there so 500% gas prices have gone up but in india what happens is that the government controls the gas prices as it used to do with the petrol prices that are there there's a thing called administered price mechanism according to which the government decides uh, at what price gas should be uh, sold to retail and residential areas and then uh, these city gas distributors go ahead and uh, sell that gas at is there so what has really happened today is that uh, on every march and every october the government resets the price uh, that uh, it offers to the city gas distributors and then city gas distributors uh, reset the price in turn for the retail buyers that are there uh, so this uh, today what the government has really done is that uh, it has hiked the prices by as high as 20% uh, in some areas depending on the taxation that that area is in 
Uh, so what has really happened? Uh, uh, people like IGL, Indratas Gas, who operate through Delhi, uh, if they send CNG gas at a rate of 45, 46 rupees a kg, uh, they will be forced to hike their uh, gas prices by at least five to six rupees. That is there, and uh, industries. A lot of industries work on gas. Uh, they use gas for a lot of uh, activities that they go through in manufacturing. They will have to pay a very high price uh, because the hike in the uh, in the commercial segment is even higher. So basically, what has happened is that uh, petrol prices are going up. Now gas prices are also going up, which will again uh, fuel uh, inflation with the, into the economy because the end user will have to pay uh, the uh, rise in the gas prices that are there. So net net. Gas is the space to be in, uh, be it from an investment point of view or be it from a usage point of view. Gas-based cars, which are already there uh, with the help of city gas distributors in major cities like Delhi, Bombay, uh, now uh, with the 11 city gas distribution uh, tenders that are opening up, even more cities will get covered. Uh, gas prices are going up. Uh, the differential between petrol and uh, gas is starting to calm down. But uh, nevertheless, gas is still a cleaner fuel to play with. Uh, there has been a substantial hike over the last one year. Um, the hike will be passed on in the coming few days to uh, all the other, uh, all the uh, uh, city gas distributors that are there who will in turn pass it on to the uh, end retail customers that is there. Right? So okay, that has happened on the gas side. Sure. Thank you, AS. Now I'll just hand it over to Tejas Pini, who's going to give us an update on the Evergrande crisis unfold, unfolding in China. Hello. Thank you so much for this opportunity, guys. Uh, and good evening to one and all. So I'll explain Evergrande crisis in three parts. First, we'll explain Evergrande as a company in brief. Later on, I'll move to explain how the crisis happened. And third, we'll look at the, some, some of the recent developments. So let's talk about Evergrande as a company in brief. It is the second largest real estate company in China, with having almost 1,300 projects in 280 cities. They also have 2 lakh employees and they create 3.8 million additional jobs. China's real estate accounts for 25% of China's GDP. Right now, Evergrande is sitting at a debt of $300 billion, which accounts for 2% of China's GDP. Evergrande has also taken loans to pursue its interest in electric vehicles, theme parks, insurance, bottled water. And they also have a soccer team and a soccer stadium as well. Now let's look, uh, let's discuss how the crisis started. Evergrande have taken loans from almost 128 banks for their expansion. Now in, gov in uh, August 2020, uh, the Chinese government have introduced the three line the three red line system uh, to explain about the system in layman terms. The system specifies how much extra money a company can take up in a year. So in April 2021, Evergrande has failed the three red line test and then it was barred from taking further loans. But Evergrande did not stop there. Uh, they also take money from they also took money from the public and right now it owes billions of dollars in cash to the people who have bought their wealth management products. They have also asked their employees to lend them money. And those who wanted to keep their bonuses would have to give Evergrande a short-term loan. So no loan, no bonuses. And right now, Evergrande has almost 1.6 million unfinished homes. And the money in those uh, kind of projects has been invested from the Chinese public and as well as the international bonds. Uh, now let's look at the latest developments that is happening regarding this case. Okay, so the Evergrande has gone from being the biggest real estate developer to the world's most indebted developer. Evergrande has missed loan payments worth thousands, hundreds of millions in the last month, which has prompted fears worldwide. And the people have started to think that it would default on its loan and collapse. They have also uh, started to refer this uh, uh, case as a Lehman's, Lehman's case of China. Uh, Evergrande also stopped payments to all its suppliers as well as employees, resulting in protests by people. And it also hired Huliman Loki, a debt restructuring company. 
the Chinese state, which is the biggest shareholder behind company's chairman, Hui Keiyan, announced its intention to sell the entire stake in company. It also announced that it would sell off $1.5 billion of its stake in Shenzhen Bank to Shenyang Finance Investment Group, uh, which is an investment company that manages China, China Chinese state assets. And all the proceedings from this transaction will be uh, used to pay off Evergrande's debt. And meanwhile, all these, the state-owned enterprises also in talks to acquire the Evergrande's unfinished stock, soccer stadium, which is built to sit almost one lakh people, and that has been left at a standstill because of this crisis. Now, if we talk about uh, will there be a government bailout? So, if you look at the past, the Horang uh, asset, asset management company, which is the biggest biggest bad debt manager, okay, they have received a rescue package in the uh, they have received a rescue package in the past from the financial firms. But if we look at uh, in the case of this Evergrande. Uh, there would be a most likely no because the policymakers have asked lenders to extend the payment deadlines and roll over loans to the Evergrande. Uh, so this would be the biggest challenge for China that it has to you know maintain the uh, balance in the economy. Uh, right now it's just a wait and watch phase and let's hope for the best uh, because if Evergrande goes down, it can impact other countries including India as well. Well, that's from my end. Thank you so much. You can take over AK. Oh, thank you, Tejasvini. Uh, now I'll just hand it over to AS, who's going to talk about the China power shortage. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have been hearing over the last one uh, week uh, about the power shortages that have popped up ac across China. Uh, so what is really happening? The genesis of this uh, shortfall lies in coal. A lot of power that is being uh, generated in India and China is through coal. There has been a massive shortage that is coming up on the coal side of it. Uh, cooking coal prices have doubled over the last one year. And uh, a lot of shortage is being felt in China and as well as in India where uh, inventories have gone down to an all-time low. Uh, so what is really happening is that uh, uh, people are turning to Australia to get co cooking coal from there as well. Uh, but the demand is not getting fulfilled. And because uh, the demand is not getting fulfilled, a lot of uh, power plants which used to run on coal are facing shortages. That is the first part of it. The second part of it is that China is doing a big crackdown on all polluting industries that are there. And a lot of coal-based power plants are also getting hit because of a uh, shortage of coal that is there. A similar thing is also happening in the uh, European Union where uh, electricity prices are hitting the roof. Uh, because of the fact all everybody wants to move away from coal energy, which is a very polluting form of uh, electricity that is there. And they want to move towards gas, which where the genesis of the gas rally all, is also lies. Uh, but the point is there is not enough gas, there is not enough oil that is there where uh, it can supplement the uh, electricity needs of everybody. So uh, in the European Union, the electricity prices are shooting through the roof. Um, in China, many cities are facing shortages. And in India, what is really happening is uh, cooking coal uh, is inventory is hitting an all-time low that is there. Uh, the situation needs to be monitored uh, because as of now, in the transitory phase, coal is our one and only power of, uh, only source of uh, power that is there. Uh, it needs to be monitored if the you know, inventories of cooking coal uh, are not restocked very quickly, then it could lead to a crisis in not only the power industry, but many ancillary industries such as the steel industry um, and so on. So it needs to be monitored, nothing problematic as of now, but needs to be monitored over the next one and a half months. Thank you, Ayes. Yeah, thank you, Ayes. Uh, now I'm just going to give you a quick roundup on uh, what is happening in the IPO markets. So uh, to start off with, you know, I'm just going to tell you the DRHP filing pace. So in the month of August, there was a DRHP every single day. So there were 30 DRHPs that were filed. Uh, in September, we had 20 DRHPs that were filed. And on the first day of October, that is as of today, uh, two DRHPs have been filed. So number one is Bharat Vikas Group or BVG as we call it. And number two has been, of course, OU Rooms uh, or uh, as it is called, Oravel Stays. So, of course, you know, OYO rooms is a very big deal and uh, we'll talk about that uh, later. Uh, so, if I have to talk about the approvals that are pending with SEBI, uh, they have approved 12 IPOs and they are yet to approve 58 IPOs. 
So it seems that, you know, even the regulator is very slow to approve all of these IPOs. And, uh, you know, as we see over here, the RHPs are just lining up. And, uh, you know, we were just reading a few days back, you know, in that uh, in October, November, there are going to be 35 to 40 companies who are going to raise uh, approximately 45,000 crores. At the same time today, uh, there were two IPO events today. Uh, you know, the Aditya Bitla AMC IPO closed. Uh, but of course, you know, the, there was not a lot, uh, there, there wasn't a lot of madness that was seen in the subscription figures. You know, overall, the IPO got oversubscribed 5.24 times. Uh, retail was uh, the uh, retail was just 3.2 times. Uh, shareholders was just 1.7x times. So of course, you know there are there can be a few reasons behind this. Uh, the issue size was quite big. Uh, there was a few there was a bit of a market jitteriness as well uh, because the markets have corrected in the past few days. And of course, you know there was the listing of Paros Defense and Space. Uh, uh, you know the IPO price was 175, but the company listed at. Uh, uh, 475 rupees and then it up, hit the upper circuit at uh, 500 rupees which was like a 185 percent premium so uh, that actually made paris defense the uh, highest uh, ever listing uh, on on, uh, on the on the listing day uh, in in the past decade you know so there are a lot of examples uh, wherein we saw uh, some similar gains so there was burger king with 130 percent gains on the listing day uh, again rctc rcc rctc again with a similar kind of a gain. Uh, then we had Happiest Minds, again with a similar kind of gain. DMART, Tatwa Chintan, GR Infra. Uh, lastly, talking about OYO, you know, uh, this has been a kind of a Zomato moment for the hotel industry. You know, uh, OYO has been uh, talking about their IPO a lot. Uh, of course, you know, after Zomato, a lot of startups have really started uh, uh, tapping the markets, you know, because that re Zomato's... Uh, blockbuster listing and blockbuster subscription really showed to the markets that you know that the markets have also matured and they are ready for uh, this kind of new age companies so uh OYO is, OYO is planning to raise around 8400 crores wherein fresh issue would be 7000 crores and the rest of it would be on offer for sale so the company has said that you know they are going to pay off uh 2400 crores from uh the fresh issue and uh, around 2900 crores they, they are going to use for uh organic and inorganic opportunities uh, with that even i'm finished with my uh, ipo roundup and uh, if anyone wants to ask a question now they can please request themselves as a speaker so i see a few people i'm just gonna keep adding them uh, hi sanjay ji we have a video speaker your question please Let me add a few more. Uh, Kiran, your question, please. We, uh, we have made you a speaker. Hello. Hi, AK. Can you hear me? Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, uh, thanks for the informative session. So my question is like, uh, so currently uh, the Chinese market is down, uh, whereas uh, all the market are similarly up. So can we see this as an investment opportunity in China? Oh, let me take this. Uh, look, uh, there is very less information available about what's happening in China. Uh, the government, whatever information it gives, we don't trust that information. So it is very difficult to give any investment advice for us on China. Uh, so we generally do not advise clients on Chinese uh, Chinese markets uh, because of a lack of understanding that uh, we have and that as investors, everybody has because of lack of information. So we will not be able to comment on the uh, Chinese market. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sanjay ji, your question, please. Uh, Hardi, your question, please. We have video speaker as well. Uh, Pratik, your question, please. Uh, 
let me just add a add a few more speakers uh ashish ji your question please hello yeah, yeah vivek ji we can hear you yeah, yeah. question please so i wanted to know that uh, since there are so many ipos coming up in the market in the next uh, two months so don't you feel that it will take out the liquidity of the secondary market because all the ipos are getting a buffer listing uh i could not get second part of your question could you repeat that please yeah sure Uh, i am repeating all the uh, question once again so i want i wanted to yes, that please. since uh, since the ipo market as mentioned by your uh, uh, by some of your team members that lot of ipos are lining up in the, in the coming next two months for the, so that don't you think that it will take out the liquidity from the secondary market so to be honest you know this this single year has been the highest has been almost the highest uh, ever for the ipo markets and the liquidity hasn't really gone out because if you see uh, central banks have been printing have been minting money uh, since the pandemic struck us so uh, i believe that liquidity is abundant because if you see if you see the subscriptions that are coming in the ipos the kind of money that is being put in ipos will be surprised you know uh yeah. hni hni categories are getting over subscribed 1000 times uh, retail category are getting subscribed 300 times qib again 500 600 times so there is abundant liquidity in the markets and that hot money is just sloshing around and it is just trying to find opportunities and of course you know uh, ipos are being used by uh, used as a lottery of sorts by all the classes of investors so definitely i mean no one no one knows when the liquidity will run out or the ipo party will stop don't don't you feel that because uh, yeah. don't you feel that the ipo which is coming they are not of a great quality as per my understanding i don't see because in 20, in 20s in 2017 like the ipo of uh, like dr lal patlab came so there was a conviction that this company will perform in the long run but all the ipo which is coming in the current uh, in the current year they are not, uh, not they are not of a great quality as per my understanding so vivek ji uh, you know the other the nature of ipos is such that you know it will start off with good companies and then a mad, a kind of madness or a euphoria gets built up in the market and what really happens after that is that uh, a lot of companies just come come in and try to raise capital even if they do not need the money or they try to tap the market at exorbitant valuations so 2007 8 10 17 and now 21 we have seen it every time okay thanks for the okay. thank you so much Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. So Ashish ji, your question, please. You are a speaker. Or Pratik ji, you. Let me add more speakers. Hello. Uh, Pratik, yeah, Pratik ji, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my question is on information technology stocks. So uh, recently uh, we. we are seeing that it is coming down from the recent top that it has made so is there more room left over there or uh, already always aditya has said that the valuation are very high as far as pe and book value is concerned but uh, what do you think what should we do ahead with it stocks that we have okay uh, let me take uh, this question look markets move in a cycle uh, it should be very clear uh, it's about predicting market cycles uh, back in 2016 nobody wanted to buy it stocks that was exactly the time to buy the it stocks uh, today everybody wants to buy it stocks uh, with good news do not come good valuations with bad news uh, good valuations come in and the point is very very clear all it stocks beat mid cap it or the large cap it as well traded ob- obnoxious valuations should be very clear business prospects of uh, business prospects continue to be very very strong uh, over the next two or three years uh, the business prospects will remain very strong in fact uh, this quarter uh, the tcvs for uh, some companies like tata or uh, consultancy and other companies will continue to be very very strong uh, but is there margin of safety that is there inside any of these stocks absolutely not uh, is the business doing very well absolutely yes now it is your call as to what do you want to really do we we do not uh, Uh, advise uh, very strong entries into these companies. You have to be very very careful with uh, what you do because margin of safety while investing is very very important. 
Uh, Aditya, thanks for the answer. Uh, I have uh, one more uh, thing to ask here. Uh, you say that the TCV is increased, uh, but uh, what about the margins? Because uh, anything where the revenue increases, but if they can maintain margin, then only that's a prospective good business, right? Uh, but seeing if what is happening around in uh, IT hiring and the overall scenario, do you think these companies will be able to maintain their margin going ahead? None of the companies will be able to maintain their margins. The margins are at a super normal high, for example, a company like Tata Lexi is reporting 30% margins, uh, which uh, is not their aspirational guidance, uh, which is not their aspirational band. Uh, with huge influx of business that is coming in comes huge attrition. And with huge attrition comes a hit on the margins. So that is what I said. There is no margin of safety inside any of these companies. Uh, if attrition for any of these companies continues to be very high and it hits the margins, uh, the market will not take it kindly because the valuations are extremely expensive. Uh, so there are n number of things that can go wrong. Uh, now at the top of the cycle, you should not be worrying about what is going right. You should be worrying about what is going wrong because what can go right is already passed inside those norms. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, Virag, your question, please. Let's see the next one again. Yeah, uh, Virag or Adbhut, uh, anyone? Yeah, we can hear you, Virag. Yeah. Yeah, so my question is about a sector that is not much talked about. It's solid waste management sector. So uh, we're talking about a company in particular, there's a company called Antony Waste uh, uh, Handling Cell. So they're into transportation of waste, waste to, uh, they basically transport the waste into solid waste management facility. They have various facilities in Kanjumar, Mumbai also. So I don't want to talk about the company in particular, but if you can share some light on the sector as a whole. What do you think about the solid waste management sector as a whole? So I don't want to, I don't want you to, you guys to talk about the fish in particular, but if you can talk about the pond as in the potential this sector has, solid waste management. Okay, okay. thanks for the question. Uh, the waste management industry has huge potential. Uh, there are a couple of companies that are out there which uh, are doing good stuff there. It is about finding those companies. Some companies do, uh, in my experience, uh, since 2008, uh, many companies do overpromise and underdeliver in this sector. You have to constantly keep monitoring as to uh, how the progress of their comp of these companies really are. But waste management, waste recovery is a very good theme to play at. But you have to constantly keep on the uh, progress, uh, keep on monitoring the progress of these companies that are there. So, uh, as of moment, are you guys monitoring any companies, uh, any listed companies? No, there are, uh, we monitor every sector that is out there and there are a couple of companies that are there that are already under our radar. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, Adbhut, your question, please. Yeah, good evening, guys. Can you hear me? Good evening. Yeah. yeah my question is, uh, first of all, thanks for this informative session. My question is regarding... Uh, this recent development in coal and energy sector, how this is going to impact Indian steel makers? Okay, let me take that. Uh, it is very simple. The uh, prices of iron ore have uh, corrected from $230 to $100, but the steel prices are not correcting. Uh, why are they not correcting? The prices of cooking coal are reaching an all-time high, uh, which is supporting the coal, uh, steel prices as of now. Uh, this is negative for the steel industry as uh, this uh, the prices shoot up big time. Uh, and today, uh, for example, today, uh, sale Steel Authority of India Limited has raised its prices by two two thousand rupees a ton across all products that are there. HRC, um, uh, long products, flat, uh, flat products, all products have uh, the prices have been raised. So in the long, in the short term, uh, it will be negative. Uh, the input cost for the steel makers will continue to go up and they will be forced to raise money. Uh, the prices have already doubled out in the last one year for the steel industry and it will be increasingly difficult for steel industries to continue to keep raising prices. That are there. So they will uh, continuously increasing prices? 
across the products definitely so today there was one more increase that was there in the last three months three increases have already happened yeah uh, this this is despite the fact that the biggest raw material which is iron ore uh, the prices of iron ore has come nearly about 50% over the last one month yes yes thanks thanks for that yeah uh, hardi uh, sorry ashish your question please Uh, yeah, Harshi, we can hear yeah. you. Yeah. So my question to you guys is that since we, I mean, from last month we've been hearing a lot of negative news that there 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 can be a correction in stock market. Everything is topped out, uh, and then you have a China factor, and then also hearing that you know Fed is going to uh, start the liquidity tapering soon. Today, uh, you know, U.S. market was not doing well. Suddenly, the news came in that Merck Pharma came uh, with a pill. which is probably under approval or probably it now shows that it reduces the 50% of uh you know hospitalization or death uh, it reduces that and now the the us market is doing absolutely good i am asking in case if a thing like this comes uh, can we see more bullishness in the market for next one year because then this is this is very good news that you can simply eat a pill and most probably 50% uh, of your chances of Uh, getting covid or you know ending up in the hospital is reduced so today the news has come and i think the us stock market is uh, is reacting to that news and probably covid is uh, a problem or it was a problem for everybody so can can these kind of news uh, change uh, this complete negativity and let's say we are more bullish about uh, the stock market for next one year if this uh, if this is a good thing okay thanks for the question uh, but there is a negativity i don't see any negativity uh, stock prices have risen are continuing to rise there is no uh, problem as such let me quote warren buffet here and the thing goes like this only two people know in the short term what is going to happen one is god and the other is liar uh, you don't know what is going to happen in the short term nobody knows what is going to happen in the short term uh, everybody creates narrative with the uh, price that they see on the screen Um, our job as investment managers asset managers a stock investors is that we have to continuously keep on uh, investing in good quality companies and then sit on them for long periods of time what the market will do today i don't know what the market will do to uh, one year down the line i don't know uh, if in 2020 covid crisis march when the market corrected from 14000 to uh, from 12000 to 7 uh, 8000 nobody had a clue that the market will go on to hit 18000 in one year time so nobody knows what is going to happen maybe a lot of the uh, bullishness is also priced in that time will tell but one thing is very very certain uh, stock valuations do not leave any margin of safety that is out there thanks thanks uh, amit amit ji your question please yeah i am audible Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So my question actually is about uh, you know uh, we all know that inflation is actually going higher the roof you know everywhere. So there is something that is expected from the governments all around the world in terms of tapering and you know increasing the rates etc. Uh, and US uh, Fed might you know kind of initiate that action and then you know there is a possibility India would follow suit. Uh, when do we see this you know possibly going to happen from an India point of view? And in terms of the impact, given that you know all the good companies. around you know uh, uh, in india have already reduced their debt to you know as low as it can be you know done uh, this year and past year what sort of impact do we see even if the you know rates increase uh, going down the line you know uh, in terms of these good companies i'm not talking about the ones which are you know not that great but the good companies given that debt restructuring has actually worked well uh, in this low uh, interest uh, you know times yeah thanks Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. When will the when will the? Okay. Uh, hello. Hello. Okay. My voice is. Uh, hello. Yeah. Is it's, it's better now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's better now. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so when will the rates increase? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. The only thing that we can predict is that directionally the rates are uh, destined to move up. Uh, when will they move? Time will tell. Nobody knows it. It all depends on how central banks behave. 
So it is nobody in the world knows when the rates will increase. That's point one. Point two is this: uh, if good company, uh, there was no uh, debt restructuring that was allowed for corporates, uh, apart from couple of sectors that are there. Uh, during the whole of COVID crisis, there was a moratorium that was given, but uh, not a debt restructuring that was given. If good companies are there, uh, they will pay seven percent interest. They will pay eight percent interest. Should not be a problem for them. Debt on good companies should not be a problem. Debt on bad companies is definitely a problem, uh, which we are not talking about anyway here. Uh, okay, so we'll take the next question from Birzapur. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Hi to all. So I want to know that is there is uh, the chemical sector is not uh, working anymore within ten ten to fifteen days. When the pharma sector, please show some light on that. Do you understand your question? Um, so, what do you want to know about these two sectors? Uh, is there long term there any, or what do you? Want? Is there any uh, further growth or some cycle is going to uh, move forward them or they they uh, they are on a consolidated phase? Look, uh, in India, every sector has got potential. Specialty chemicals and pharma sector have huge potential in this country. It is about which companies that you can invest in to ride this wave that is there. A specialty chemicals, many companies have turned out to be a 20, 50, 100 baggers over the last five, seven, 10 years. Uh, in the next 10 years, the same thing will happen. You have to find out which companies to buy. Similarly, in the pharma sector, uh, many companies are doing great job here. Uh, you have to find out which companies to bet on and which companies to not bet on. So this will, uh, if the, that uh, we have seen in corona, uh, corona that the many of these sectors have gone rapidly growth in them is there is any further growth yeah. or in particular stocks uh, we have to to be fixed to the uh, or choice picking stocks uh, we have to take only no you have to go company specific and see how uh, in the last one year uh, covid affected their business and how, what are the long-term uh, growth prospects of the sector? How is the company positioned with the mode that they have? A lot of factors depend when you analyze the company that is there. It is simply just not uh, COVID that has uh, given rise to this pharma rally or this specialty chemicals rally. It was all building up, uh, not one year uh, before, three, four, five years, uh, ever since three, four, five years, all of it was building up. Sure. Uh, Anil ji, your question, please. Ah. We have video. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my question is on small cap IT, just like Birla Soft and all. Yes, sir. Uh, as I already said, that be it a small cap IT or be it a mid cap IT or be it a large cap IT, there is no margin of safety that is available, and that's about it. Okay, okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Saranj, your question, please. Uh, Nairanj, Nairanshu, your question, please. Uh, we have video speaker. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, sir, yeah, we can hear you. Your question, please. Uh, yeah, this is Nainan here. Uh, Hindi will be okay? Yeah, yeah. So, I would like to ask that if the Evergrande affects in China, what will it affect in India? Just to understand, in India, 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 uh, after covid uh, jo uh, real estate sector ka jo boom hua hai especially real uh, residential sector mein uh, commercial sector mere khayal mein bahut low chal raha hai to uh, mujhe yahi janna tha ki evergrande ka india mein real estate sector ke upar kya effect hoga thank you okay dekhiye uh, evergrande jo hai wo chinese economy ka bahut bada part hai bahut sare interlinked uh, lenders hain unke sath so, uh, if it is like a, a pack of cards, if one card is down, then many cards will fall. It is uh, a lot of panic will set out in the Chinese economy that is there. Uh, 
सो चाइनीज गवर्नमेंट कोशिश कर रही है कि डिफॉल्ट ना हो और वो डायरेक्टली हेल्प ना करे बट इनडायरेक्टली हेल्प करके इस सिचुएशन से बाहर निकला जाए और मोस्ट लाइकली वही होगा इनडायरेक्टली चाइनीज गवर्नमेंट हेल्प करेगी और ये एवरग्रांड सिचुएशन बहुत बड़ा प्रॉब्लम बनने से बच जाएगी जैसे कि लीमन था ये प्रॉब्लम लीमन से भी बड़ा है बट यहाँ पे जैसे कि यूएस गवर्नमेंट ने लीमन को कोलैप्स होने दिया यहाँ पे चाइनीज गवर्नमेंट एवरग्रांड को कोलैप्स नहीं होने देगी अनुराग जी वी हैव एडेड यू एज अ स्पीकर योर क्वेश्चन प्लीज सरंश योर क्वेश्चन प्लीज आई जस्ट वांट टू नो योर व्यू ऑन लार्ज कैप प्राइवेट सेक्टर बैंक फॉर नेक्स्ट वन एंड हाफ टू इयर्स ओके um next one is um, never invest in equities uh, for the uh, short term one or two years you know should never invest in equities that is point number 1 point number 2 is uh on the large private sector banks they will continue to win uh, they will continue to gain market share in deposits as well as loan growth over the next 2 3 years uh there will be huge credit cycle that will play out in the economy and these large private sector banks are the ones who are uh holding a lot of capital with them some of them are sit on capital adequacy anywhere between 18 to 25% uh, so should not be an issue to push credit growth into the economy uh, over the last uh, two weeks uh, we have seen uh banks pull out money from rbi's reverse repo uh, they had 6 lakh crores parked there now slowly uh, it has come down to 3 lakh crores so uh, credit will be pushed inside the system large cap private sector banks will continue to do well of course the valuations are not cheap there so you need to take that in mind uh, accidental investor your question please we have video speaker hello लास्ट सिक्स मंथ की अगर हम निफ्टी की पी की बात करते हैं तो इन मे इट वाज अराउंड थर्टी एंड नाउ इफ वी सी करंटली इट इज ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट समथिंग सो व्हाट शुड वी इन्फर फ्रॉम दिस एंड सेकंडली व्हाट शुड बी द आइडियल निफ्टी पीई सो दैट वी कैन से दैट की मार्केट की वैल्यूएशन ओवर वैल्यूड नहीं है मार्केट बेसिकली ओके निफ्टी की आइडियल वैल्यूएशन क्या होनी चाहिए नो आंसर निफ्टी पीई क्या निफ्टी का पीई मैटर नहीं करता है बिकॉज निफ्टी इंक्रीजिंगली अब मोमेंटम इंडेक्स बनता जा रहा है मोमेंटम इंडेक्स बनता जा रहा है तो इसके मतलब ये हो रहा है कि जो कंपनी परफॉर्म नहीं करती है उसको बाहर निकाल दिया जाता है और जो कंपनी नियर टर्म में परफॉर्म करती है उसको अंदर ले लिया जाता है तो इससे ये बहुत डिफिकल्ट जज करना है कि निफ्टी का आइडियल पी क्या होना चाहिए मार्केट में वैल्यूएशन निफ्टी को सॉरी टू डिस्टर्ब माय क्वेश्चन वाज मोर ऑन द साइड ऑफ मार्केट सेंटीमेंट इंस्टेड ऑफ निफ्टी परफॉर्मेंस हाँ मैं आ रहा हूँ वहां पे मैं आ रहा हूँ वहां पे अगर आपको मार्केट में देखना है कि मार्केट के वैल्युएशन किस तरीके के है तो आप इंडिविजुअल निफ्टी के इंडिविजुअल कंपनीज में चाहिए और देखिए कि उनके वैल्यूएशन क्या हैं तो आपको रियलाइज होगा इंडिविजुअली उन कंपनीज के वैल्यूएशन दे आर ट्रेडिंग एट अ थ्री ईयर हाई इन द शॉर्ट टर्म एंड एट फॉर सम कंपनीज एट अ डेकेड हाई सो वैल्यूएशन अक्रॉस कंपनीज शुड नेवर बी सीन एज अ निफ्टी वैल्यूएशन इट शुड ऑलवेज बी सीन कंपनी बाय कंपनी एंड सेक्टर बाय सेक्टर इफ यू सी द सेक्टर बाय सेक्टर वैल्यूएशन यू विल फाइंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल एंड आई टी सेक्टर वैल्यूएशन आर एक्सट्रीमली पंची दे आर नॉट चीप एट ऑल श्योर थैंक यू एस सो गाइज आई स्टिल सी अ लॉट ऑफ रिक्वेस्ट अराउंड ट्वेंटी टू रिक्वेस्ट आई सी बट वी विल नॉट बी एबल टू टेक इट अप दैट वॉज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर द इवनिंग आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू थैंक यू ऑल फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इन एंड आस्किंग अ लॉट ऑफ थॉटफुल क्वेश्चन Have a happy weekend and uh, good night.